Oh yeah, that's the sound of Tuesday. This is Normal World. My name is Quarterback Garrett, and this is the news. Over the weekend, Disney is, well, Disney and Bob Iger blame the box office massive flop, The Marvels, on COVID. Uh, the only difference between The Marvels and COVID is that no one that watched The Marvels was happy they survived. <laughs> <laughs> kind of how it goes now. It's true. A study shows penguins sleep for just seconds at a time in an effort to guard their newborns, which isn't all that different from human parents who sleep seconds at a time when they have a newborn. Oh, uh, yeah. See, we can do some wholesome, family-friendly jokes here at Normal yeah, World. We can. Only fan star. The white female <laughs> rapper. Bad Baby, best known for her infamous Dr. Phil appearance, announced she is pregnant with her first child. Wow, the first? I, I'll tell you one thing. If that was me that got her pregnant, you could cash me outside a clinic. <laughs> Dang. Oh, why? Why? I just, why you just spent a dime on so. a coat hanger. Oh. <laughs> also, Obamacare didn't work for everybody. Well, staircases. Gee, yeah. Are, staircases are Family free. planning jokes is yeah. what you meant to say. <laughs> and welcome to Normal World. I'm Dave Lando. I'm quarterback Garrett and... Today, we have Mangela. Mangela is here. Hello, everyone. It's me, Mangela. Mm. Uh, she had bottom surgery over the weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, we're all dealing with it in our own way. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a coping mechanism. And HRT therapy is working like a champ. I'm feeling wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully, she will be back to her normal self mm -hmm. uh, in a day or two. Yeah. Um, but uh, until then, Mangela will be here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really need a deep voice. I already have. Yeah, you're just. Yeah, I, like, I don't know why you're doing that. Okay, you're playing her, playing you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just do this the rest of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it for some reason works. Yeah, Thank you. That's fine. And of course, our guest, you can see him in the new uh, Matt Rife, uh, Jamie Kennedy film, Don't Suck. Please welcome Derek Richards. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Always delightful. Great to see you guys. It's good to see you, man. Thank you. I feel like we're like building a, a rapport here. This is great. Friendship. This is like family I want to visit. Yeah. Our, uh, as, they, as the kids say it, the chosen family. Yes, it is a chosen family. That's right. It is. It's friends. It is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. With benefits. Was, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like our night at the movie last night. That was. Oh, you, you also got the uh, popcorn gag on you. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. happened to me before? I asked for extra synthetic butter. That's yeah. all we had was butter. That was it. It was like, what do you mean no popcorn? And Just I was like. give us a tub of slippery stuff. Like, bring me butter and stop asking questions. <laughs> and here's and a, $100 to stay out of the theater. And a gag for my buddy. Yes, fortunately, no one else was in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not went to the Marvels. <laughs> movies, yeah, no kidding. Movies not. It's it's. We'll talk about. It. <laughs> it's a good sell. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to the Marvels. Go see something good. Yeah. Well, I guess unless you want nobody else in the theater, I, then go to the Marvels. I guess that's true. Nobody's going to the Marvels either. There was nobody in that theater. There was nobody in the. No one was seeing anything. Anything. Last night. No. There were more, the, the employees outnumbered everybody. What did you guys watch? Uh, where? Yeah, what did you watch? Oh, we watched his movie, Don't Suck. Because I Don't oh, Suck. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. Went, yeah, I went and saw the premiere. Well, not the premiere, but we, he, went, he hadn't he seen it yet. See? So we went out and saw it. And uh, well, we can get into this part first. Why not? Hell there's, yeah. There's no rules to this. We went and saw uh, Don't Suck last night. And it was great. Yeah. And I have to say, like, I didn't know what to expect. I like Jamie Kennedy and Malibu's Most Wanted. Hell yeah. That's one of my favorite movies. It's like, so good. It's such an underdog comedy movie. I just feel like nobody ever talks about it, but it's so good. Everybody in that movie is just great. But yeah. And Jamie is just, he's always been funny. Well, and then you have Anthony Anderson as the foil, who's oh, like, a, like a Harvard educated Tay guy Diggs. Tay Diggs is like, who's trying to so be straight, great. <laughs> but he can't be. And Nick Swartzen. Yeah, yeah, Nick Swartzen's in it, who's so many, so amazing. Many like, the whole cast is perfect. And it was good to see him, like... What I liked about this movie is every movie involving stand-up comedy is just horrible jokes. And, I mean, there was, like, a couple misses, but, like, movies like Punchline or anything... Oh, the worst. Mm -hmm. It's just... They, it's written by somebody who doesn't understand stand-up comedy. And this was a movie written by stand-up comics with stand-up comics in it. That's great. So it was actually funny. Well, and right now, it, we're in a desert... 
of comedy movies. There's just nothing out there that's good. Like the last movie that came out, I think was like a comedy was uh, Bros. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh God, that, <laughs> that's what you're. That's what we're getting now. I only watched Bros. it on mute, but <laughs> I watched I, uh, it for the performances. Yeah. <laughs> But we saw this, and Derek's part's hilarious. I don't want to ruin your entrance because it's one of the funniest in the in the movie. Well, thank you. You you're perfect. Like they cast you as you. I think there's only one other role you could have. I think there's two roles meant. You know, could have been meant for you. But uh, that was perfect casting, and I liked the story. I mean, Matt Rife was really good in selling the the character of the vampire. Yeah. Just on stage, just saying, you know, like there, uh, there's a great scene there looking at this picture. He's like, you banger. It's like this old painting from 1600. He's like, that was my mother. It's like, do you banger? But and he's like, she, he's like, what happened to her? He's like, she was beheaded. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a trailer? Can we watch a trailer? Yeah, let's watch it. Let's watch it. Yeah. Take a look at the kid that I'm sticking on stage next. Why would I ever do that? You've seen people bomb. This kid next levels it. I am a vampire. I'm neither Team Edward or Team Jacob. I rooted for the sun. He was so scary, he scared the laughs away. I saw you in the back. Oh yeah, I was the guy who laughed. Thank you for that. You ever needed an opener? What's up? I have a commitment for you to open up the brand new Russell Peter special. Pick an opener. The one's going to be appointed for you. If you take me, and I will pay for every expense. What do you say? All right. Guy has a friggin' coffin. He's a good guy, and you can learn a thing or two. Like what? How to hang upside down? I once joined a doomsday cult, and by the time I got there, everybody was dead. Ned, will you quit the vampire routine? It's not a routine. I mean, the glowing eyes, contacts, the teeth. It's an odd lifestyle choice, but hey, it's Vegas. But dude, you turned into a bat! Dude, you're amazing. What'd you find this kid? Only fangs. <laughs> Aren't you late for your job at the truck stop glory hall? The Poseidon Twilight? Don't do this. You killed a guy and drank his blood. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you have any idea what it's like to be emotionally dead inside? Have you met me? I'm a comedian. Do you want to touch it? <laughs> so this movie had like a little bit of a journey getting to the theaters, right? This was shot like three years ago. It was shot in October of 2020. Oh. And it was, well, they were going to shoot it before COVID. And then obviously COVID hit and everything, you know, went sideways. And so the Russell Peters character was supposed to be played by Bill Burr. Uh, because my buddy Rick D'Elia, who wrote it, is good friends with Bill. And Rick's in it. And Rick's in it. Rick was the MC right at the right. beginning. Uh, the guy with the gray hair and the, yeah. uh, and the sport coat. And um, so, yeah, so then COVID hit. Bill Burr couldn't do it. They ended up getting Russell Peters, which ended up working out fantastic for the production because for international distribution, because Russell was so popular. Yeah. Uh, overseas and so it ended up uh you know finally coming out but again another speed bump you know now you now you have the it's done but now you've got to shop it so they're taking right. it to film festivals they took it to con they've taken it took it all over the place so they finally got a distributor well you were saying and, it went through like filters right like it went through this like oh, it got woke filter down, like you would not like believe tried. oh yeah i Just, mean they had uh, yeah yeah, say one joke. Go ahead. Well, the one joke, yeah, and it's a great joke. I mean, you it saw was, him in the beginning. The guy's got white hair, red tie, and a suit. So, yes. yeah. And so the line that Jamie Kennedy was giving to my buddy Rick, who was the MC, is, you look like a fatter, gayer Anderson Cooper, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, you're like, oh, not yanked. that. So, I mean, they really hacked this thing up like it was nobody's business. And so through the editing process and through the woke filters of Hollywood, mm. um, you know, even like Jamie said at one point in time, he's like, listen, I know we got to leave some of these jokes back in here. So even with all of that, it's a really great movie. I wonder, do you think they'd ever yeah. do like an unrated DVD release kind of thing. I, mean, I know they don't cool. do DVD releases anymore. But. I mean, it'd be cool if they did. But I mean, even like some of the jokes that you that you saw in there that they they put back in oh yeah there was definitely some irreverent jokes in there yeah. that i was surprised yeah. were in a movie these days that's so good and honestly like right now with them that. trying to cancel matt rife i think they should put out a version with hell yes oh huge 
I mean, they had, like I said, I saw the original script, and it's funny as hell. Rick's a great writer. He did, did a fantastic job. I mean, Jamie added a lot to it. Matt was fantastic to work with. He really was funny in that character. Yeah, and just a great guy on set. I mean, yeah. he was super, super cool. So was Jamie. Everybody was great. But then, you know, then all of a sudden you go through all the woke filters and having to insert stuff back in that they were like, listen, you're taking all the funny out of this. This is a movie about comedy. It's about comedians. It's about this guy who's a vampire who wants to be a comedian. He's on the road with Jamie Kennedy, who's like a washed up headliner, taking him on the road. And so there was just so much irreverent stuff in there that was way more irreverent than what got in. Yeah. They fought for a lot of stuff. I love this. And it got back in. Unrated. Which was, but like I said, when we were at the theater watching it last night, I'm like, wow, okay, that got in. Cool. It's cool. So yeah, we we have there's no like I said no great comedies coming out these days. Like it's just so uh, for people that are in the the that sphere, so scary to them. Right. Like uh, uh, what's his name? Todd Phillips. He directed the Hangover movies. He's a really great director. He said, "I will not direct a comedy movie. You just can't these days, right? Because you get canceled and all this stuff." So I I love seeing that kind of come back and start making more comedies and being more irreverent and taking those chances. Cause I think people want it. The audience want it. So it's, it's great to see. What was funny was your line, Dave, when, when, when you got done and you said, what did you say? You said, this was way better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll be honest. I, I thought it was so good. I, because you know, your, your buddy writes it and you shoot your scenes uh-huh. and you're like, all right, well let's see what happens. There's stuff that I just about movies too, that I, really do tend to appreciate, especially with like an independent spirit. Like the night before or two nights ago, I was watching, um, it was with Nicolas Cage and the guy from the new, uh, silent night movie. And, uh, oh, 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 what was that movie? It's, it's, Nicholas Cage uh, has so many movies now. Yeah. And it's Ken, you could look it up, Andy? It, but it's one of the, or sorry, Mandela, Mandela, Mandela. Yeah. Not Ken. Mandela's look it up. Big into horror. <laughs> can, um, we cut, can we cut that? Yes, but it's like mm-hmm. the devil's in the title, but is something like that. It's a very recent. But anyway, what I liked about this was there is this huge underlining story. There's obviously the allegory of the comic being at night. It's he's really just the idea of a viral sensation, which is ironic, you know. But it's yeah. like there's a there's a lot of levels to it and a lot of inside baseball with comedy that I think exposes it to the audience in a way that's not like, you don't know about this, it's mm-hmm. sort of teaching you about it. Well, welcomes you in, yeah. to that world. Yeah, it's not speaking down to you, it's a movie that's it's like cool. embracing you, and it's not treating the audience like, it's not disrespecting the crowd, it's treating you as if you've un- you understand this world, and that's what I like so much about it. And then it's showing you the side where, like when you first watch the movie, um, Wild, uh, oh, this is good. I'm naming him right and left here tonight. Uh, with Jeff Bridges, it's uh, he plays the country Wild Heart? singer, Wild Heart, Wild yeah. Heart. Like when he first pulls up to the bowling alley and he's got like the jar of yeah, urine next to him and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of gigs we've done. Yeah. So you feel that like going in and there's like 40 people and sure they end up fun, but like that this movie made you f- remind you of all those gigs you've done when you're going on the road with this guy and. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's great at what he does, but he's just, he's lost his ability to care. Yeah. That, it's it's a really great, like, human story inside of a comedy. And I think a lot of the best comedies work on both levels of comedic jokes and underlying character work. Like, that. that's, because story overall. Right now, the, the, the movie Godzilla came out. And I watched it, and I, I'm not a huge Godzilla fan. I've, I watched a couple of the old original ones. I watched the Matthew Broderick one when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, that, that movie's horrible. Uh, what? What? <laughs> so I watched this one going in and going, okay, I'll just watch it. Maybe it'll be good. for yourself. That's a lot of fish. It's a masterpiece. I read the uh, original Godzilla when you saw the zipper on the back of the costume. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I didn't expect a, yeah. a whole lot, but I watched it, and uh, I watched found... one crazy summer with Bobcat <laughs> Goldthwait. <Yes. laughs> Is it the same movie? <laughs> uh, I went into it not expecting anything, and I, I came out of it going like, "This was a really great story on top of being a really great monster movie." Mm-hmm. Like they had this story about the 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 Japanese coping with what happened after World War II, and the allegory of what what Godzilla is. And I think the, in this movie specifically, it's not like America is Godzilla that comes in and blows up Japan. Godzilla is the government 
And in the movie, it's very specifically like anti-government. Like the Japanese government doesn't know what it's doing and stuff like that. So it's it's that kind of thing. But I found myself in that movie going, this is a really in- great character story about family and about uh, you just like traditional storytelling things. And then I go, oh, there's a massive monster that's about to destroy everything. That's so I think what, movies yeah. always work no matter what field they are. With a you start with a great story, and then you put on the like the vampire, the you know the elements that bring the audience into those different worlds. Well, and that's kind of what I didn't like about the first Godzilla with Brian Cranston was it was like I get it, it's a monster. There's a lot of CGI, right? Like, and that's, that's like all the American oh all the American Godzillas are that way, right? And you think, do we have a trailer for this? Oh, Godzilla yeah, We should check this out, because I didn't even know this was like, a, there was a new Godzilla. I saw the last one, because my son wanted to. He loved it. Yeah. And, and then, this is yeah. a different, this is a different world altogether. It's like a restart. Okay. Basically. And it's all produced in Japan, so it's like traditional Godzilla version, which is interesting, because this movie came out super low budget. It's doing really well. The director wore like all the hats. He was like the VFX supervisor. He was the camera operator. He was everything. And uh, it's making all this money because it was super low budget. So I think that's where we need to go. Like Bob Iger was just interviewed and said basically the same thing is quantity over quality. They were spending all this money on all these different products and not making stories. So I think, and they're all shackled with $200 million budgets and they're crap, and nobody likes them anymore because they've. But if it doesn't make up you feel anything, exactly. that's what every movie ever made did before. That's what it's supposed to do. It's, it's supposed story. to make you, yeah. And that's right. what I liked about this movie. And then you find out stuff about Jamie Kennedy's character, and you realize why he's there. And like, there's levels to it. Makes it. you care about the characters in the film. You have to. Yeah. And for some reason, that's it's it's just been shut down. Like some of the trailers we watched, I was like, why? Why would you make this? Oh, I know. You know, it's like the same, and then some of them I thought look cool, but you know, yeah. f- but for the most part, it's just garbage. It's yeah. just, I, I think it's just talking down to an audience. So, so much of cinema, and I think it's why it fails because what television is capturing is you have to have a character arc in order to build a TV series. Absolutely. And that's where movies have lost it. You don't have that character. You don't have a, a character that can grow and change in the way that it, it used to do in film. Mm-hmm. You just have like, whoa, there's five Marvel girls. Oh my goodness, look at the CGI. And that's not even good. Well, I never understood all the CGI because I I don't know what's with my eyes personally. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing like the third Pirates of the Caribbean and I'm like, I don't know what I watched. (laughs) I'm like, it's like boats and... (laughs) Rain, yeah, and like yeah. I watched Rain, Skeleton Boys. Hours. I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, this is nonsense. <laughs> well, and you see how much money they spend on some of these productions. Then exactly. you look at like Don't Suck, which the budget on that I believe was seven hundred and fifty thousand, which wow. is insane. Yeah, insane. insane. More movies like th- it. It makes no sense that m- production houses would not just go look instead of spending two hundred fifty plus because the the public number is two hundred fifty plus reshoots and stuff like that and the, the, uh, there's actually news out there that there are sub, they're not reporting the actual budget of these movies so they're possibly even more than 250 which is insane spending all that money on that on those big movies then they flop and like all year they've just flop 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 instead of that spend a fraction of that money give it to somebody that is creative and funny and right. good and you could actually give instead of giving that one you could give it to like 50 and make 50 different movies from different people making different things. Right. And sure, maybe half of them won't work, but some of them will. Maybe not. Maybe 75% of them will fail, but you'll have like three really great ones. I think that's what's so great about like the 70s and the 80s, and there's so many iconic movies. Nobody talks about all the movies that didn't become icons. They talk about Back to the Future. They talk about Pretty in Pink. They talk about all these these different movies in different so moderately low budget though at the right. time yeah at the time these these movies but there was a swath of movies that didn't make it right because they were doing mid-tier budgets which have gone away they don't make those anymore they they were doing mid-tier budgets and they were doing a lot of them and then every once in a while they give it to the right person and it would explode yeah so we need to go back to that and make more don't sucks well and the good thing with don't suck is that they ended up having they had the lottery ticket with Matt Rife take well, it yeah of course because they shoot it and then literally Perfect like timing. seven, eight months later, he explodes. he explodes. I mean, and that was just 
perfect timing. Well, and and back to your point too, though you have uh, people like Melvin Van Peebles with black exploitation making yep. something for virtually nothing that's going to make a profit. If you gave someone today without a bunch of shackles mm-hmm. the ability to make something for seven hundred and fifty grand, and you went through union too, yeah. is all SAG. I saw, and you know, I have a SAG card, and and it's like. If you gave them that and you said, look, this movie, 750 grand, let's say it makes $4 million. It's amazing. Yeah. It's four times its profit. But the problem is the profit margins are so insane to feed these giant salaries of people. Mm-hmm. And the, there's just way too many people involved in all of these projects that they don't realize how good of a film you can make for nothing. I mean, if you look back to movies like, I don't know, and I realize it's a different time, but you go back to, like you said, 80s, 90s, whatever, you make a movie for a million dollars, two million dollars, it would hit a hundred million. That's a blockbuster. Right. Five million blockbuster. But even a movie like Videodrome, like that's weird by Cronenberg, is yeah, like, yeah. oh, I made it for 400 grand, but it made 1.2 million. Now it's a classic. Who knows what it's made ever since? All right. of the horror, that entire genre is built off of low budget filmmakers that mo- make crazy different things and, and sure like a bunch of them are crap but then every once in a while you'll get halloween you'll get uh, friday the 13th also kind of crap but it's great right uh, you know a uh, nightmare on elm street you have these massive movies because they were so low budget and people were able to kind of like through their own uh kind of pull themselves up by the bootstraps like we don't have a big budget like let's just get this stuff done and try to do it the best we can you end up getting better stuff out of that so, yeah, you yeah. can have you know, people buy crap. I mean, Red Lobster. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> it's a thing. It is a uh, thing. Speaking of which, our sponsor this week is Red Lobster. <laughs> I checked. Cheese rolls, uh, this cheese I bread thing. Checked. Mm. <laughs> My buddy of mine does a joke. The scariest mm. thing about Red Lobster, the most popular thing on the menu is not lobster. <laughs> oh, not at all. Yep. Have you ever seen what? the fish in the tank? Yeah. Ugh. Just they, look at. They look like they're in hospice. They don't even put the bands on them. They say they just want to die. No, just. They usually have them wrapped they, around their arms, <laughs> <laughs> shooting up. Everybody goes to Red Lobster for the Cheddar Bay biscuits. Yes. And then they just look at it, and then they're like, "I guess I'll have the shrimp fiesta." And the shrimp fiesta is nine shrimp that were frozen just before, soaked in butter. Mm-hmm. So halfway through, you're like, "I'm gonna finish this in the bathroom." <laughs> I'm good. Just give me another Cheddar Bay biscuit. Yeah, it's it used to be all right. Just plug up my ass. All right. It used to be all right. But yeah, I think. What about? Uh, so, what was your favorite part about filming the movie, though, and doing this? Like, you you've done stuff like this before. But this was just a cool experience, just because you don't know. You know, your friend puts it together. And you don't know what to expect. You're showing yeah. up. I'm like, all right, you know, you know, we all have friends that came up with ideas. Hey, I'm going to shoot this film. And you think you're going to show up and there's a couple of friends with, you know, a couple of camcorders and yeah. and that's it. Like our show. But you, t- <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Hey, we're going to run you over with a car. Is that okay? Yeah. I, I was fine with that. <laughs> but just to see how this idea materialized from talking to my buddy at the comedy club when he said, look. Uh, you know, I got approached by this financier who wants to do this movie about a vampire who wants to become a comedian. Yeah. And we both laugh thinking, this is stupid. <laughs> like, this then is he comes so at me a month later, he goes, I got the script. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So, I mean, I give huge props to my uh, my buddy Rick D'Elia for putting this thing together and then showing up on set and seeing it be production trucks and seeing everything there. That was the most mind-blowing experience because you hang out with this friend. You know, you're drinking with him. Yeah. You know, he's... They're like they're making a Hollywood he's, he's doing shots here. of Tito's in his living room, you know, two weeks ago, and all of a sudden here comes it's it's a big production. So yeah. it was neat seeing it blow up to the point that it did. So well, speaking that, of that was up, that was the cool part. Well, yeah. So, well, yeah, we can jump on that. Speaking of blow, well, <laughs> let's do uh well, I think we'll stick with the Hollywood motif for a minute, actually. Oh but let's uh let's do talk about our sponsor. Yes. Because I think you guys can talk about it because you two let's do it. Shared a little drinky. Part. Fox and Odin whiskey. Mmm, they contacted us and was like, Hey, we want to sponsor your show because uh you guys look like you don't know what you're doing. And we're like, You're correct. Fox and whiskey whiskey here at Fox Odin? Fox and Odin. What did I say the first time? Fox and Odin? Whiskey. Hey, look. Oh, if you it. like to drink whiskey, yes, try it. yes, I do. You tried it. Uh, yeah. You have a whole show predicated on you drinking. That's, so yeah, you're Irish, right? Yes, sir. So I would, I would trust your opinion. You had some of this. That stuff was. You feel better. That stuff is fantastic. It has a, it has a very uh, smooth, sweeter finish. Which uh, I drink Irish whiskey for the most part. That is a bourbon. Mm-hmm. And for me to cross over from an Irish whiskey to a bourbon. 
and go, okay, I could easily drink that stuff on the rocks. I would love that. Yeah, it works. It works neat. I haven't mixed it. I would not mix this because no. it's one of those those bottles you don't. I mean, you can make an old fashioned with it if you were going to be fancy. That's actually, yeah. I've never made my own though. Yeah. I feel like this would be good in it though. Oh, yeah. And my thing, I don't like whiskey that's too spicy. I like the more smooth ones. And this one that's that. is really good. They also have a uh, double barreled, which is a little bit more spicy. So if you like that, they also got that as well. So you can go down there, use code normal, Fox and Odin. I'm doing it the, the wrong way. Fox and Odin.com. Promo code normal. It's a good Get gift. It. Delicious. Yeah, look at it. It looks all Christmassy. Oh, I like that. You're going to have some eggnog you can pour in. I like how the show run- better. The showrunner is walking down the hallway with a bottle of whiskey and he goes, I'm looking for Derek. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> and I went, well, hang on. That is me. Look at, look at Santa. Oh, yeah. I texted him. Showing up. He's like, you know who's a fan of whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like that guy? Yes. Well, I, uh, we can't uh, Let's talk about Macaulay Culkin first. I think oh, we yeah. should mention this. He got his star. Congrats, on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and yes, I, I'm a Macaulay Culkin fan, and obviously we're going to the holidays and Home Alone being uh-huh. one of the the finest holiday films. Do you like that film, Angela? Oh, I love Home Alone. Yes. Good. Mm-hmm. Also, that movie was Sympathy for the Devil. I remembered it before you could find it. You're doing a bang-up job. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you meant Renfield. <laughs> Uh, I also thought he was talking slow. about Renfield. Okay, yes. So no, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm on your side, man. Thank you, man. Don't, don't do that. Please be on my side. <laughs> my bottom surgery hurt. Yeah, okay. I know. You're still healing. I know. It's just, it's, yeah, it's very slow. I should be standing. I love this accent. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's so random. Mm. It's basically, That's Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder, but acceptable now. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. So Jeeves was slow, sorry. Oh, oh, Jeeves, Jeeves normally isn't. It's one of our sponsors. Yeah, he's really good. It's not. Like Macaulay Culkin uh, uh, got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's nice to see a child star doing something on the Hollywood Walk of Fame other than, you know, ODing in their 30s. Yeah. Uh, let's go <laughs> ahead and take a look. And in the spirit of the holiday season, I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs> good job. Well, finally, you know, now people, homeless people can poop on his star. That's true. Well, he does seem balanced, though, which I like. And I think, like, he was kind of, he was a little wild there for a little while. And I think he's, like, balanced out. And he's really cool. Actually, he's on a, he's been on a few uh, internet shows, like uh, Red Letter Media. He's on a lot of their their videos. Great on there. He's really funny. Yeah. Well, I think he got, like, he's been a, uh, yeah. I think he was just able to dodge a lot of the Hollywood pedos because he was so good at making traps. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> just lay out <laughs> Christmas ornaments. I think that was really what it was. Like Kevin, I heard Kevin Spacey actually tried out for the role of Marv and didn't know he was auditioning. <laughs> they just found him outside of his dressing room rolling around on marbles with his dick in a mouse trap. <laughs> it's like, I'm, hey, I'm gay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Jeffrey Jones goes flying out of Macaulay's front door. Because <laughs> <laughs> he got hit with a paint can. <laughs> you just see Dan Schneider with gauze around his hand from a hot doorknob. <laughs> on his foot. <laughs> Turns out the, the pock marks on Harvey Weinstein are from a BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that movie's so good. It holds up 100%. My six-year-old was watching the second movie, and she was busting out laughing, like, so hard at, at Home Alone. I thought about that. I saw that with my dad in 90 with all of our friends, like seven of us went. Never yeah. left harder at a movie. Dude, it's so funny. And it was when I discovered Slapstick. Tim Curry's great in it, too. Yes. The second one. Yeah. I don't know. If, there's not enough two. love in the second one. I like that. I love the second one as well. That was also one of the movies that Trump helped finance, so he had to be in it. Mm-hmm. And he was in it for. I remember he, that? He yeah. Finance the Little Rascals as well. Is that why he yeah. was in it? Yeah, he's in Little I didn't Rascals. Know that? I thought he was just like a personality. So yeah, people him. all liked him until uh, <laughs> yeah. Hollywood didn't get to be president. Yeah. All of a sudden they're like, yeah. wait a second, we hate this guy. This Whoops. Jerk. I want my. So <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how they sound. How they sound. By the way. Well, and I want to say this that uh, you know this is going to bring us to today's Hollywood fun fact. Uh, during the silent film era, Charlie Chaplin would audition actresses by making them stand naked while he threw pies at them. <laughs> if they cried, 
they failed the audition because that meant they couldn't mime. <laughs> I guess Hitler wasn't the only evil one with that mustache. Oh. <laughs> I often remember Hitler throwing pies. <laughs> Dude, that's a true at, thing. At naked, that is true. And naked yeah. women. Oh, yeah. Men were monsters, especially yeah. at the beginning of cinema. Mm-hmm. Why not? Charlie had sex with 2,000 plus women, he, he claimed. Why wouldn't he? I'm not he's, saying he's he shouldn't. Great. Yeah, but I mean. Well, I think he made a sound when he, he threw <laughs> He threw pies and cream oh. pies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> Fatty Arbuckle was an Nobody knew that those pies being. were cream. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> Fatty Arbuckle was an outstanding human being. He actually yes. was. Okay, that was a media smear, okay? Yes. Fatty Arbuckle is a legend, and he never should have gotten media smeared like that. Yeah, unlike the actresses who were really smeared. (laughs) (laughs) Which was totally acceptable at the time. We lived in a different time. But yeah, Fatty Arbuckle was accused of rape. Uh But here's the thing. He was impotent. So they claimed he did it with a Coke bottle Mm. and destroyed the man's career. Uh And he was the first person to sign a multi-million dollar contract ever as an actor. Yeah, and his his whole life was destroyed by the media. So first cancel culture. Was by two like well Jesus was the first one. Yeah, two girls that were at a party who he didn't know were like prostitutes who then accused him of rape raping them with a coke yeah, bottle. That's how it goes. Yep. It's almost just like wasn't there a, a football player that that sure, happened to recently? Mangelus. <laughs> so, that's, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. That was so- <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know that was autobiographical for you there, Mangela. You know, I know. Uh, oh, I was Mangela. Yeah, I, oh, I, every day. I feel Fatty's pain. That Coke <laughs> bottle. Me and Fatty like this. <laughs> mm. Me and old Fatty. Can you imagine, though, be, being a woman and going to the audition? I can. And that's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure Sorry. you can. Sorry. <laughs> you show up and it's like, he lines up six women, they throw pies at him, and then they kick him walking out and the girls are in the waiting room. So how did it go? <laughs> well, how the hell do you think it went? Look at me. Her husband drove her. Yes. <laughs> how did it go there? She's just. Did got you get that, the job? She's got that awful short 1920s lice haircut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just covered in pie. I didn't get the part again. Why are you crying? Because I didn't get the part. When is that? Why are you crying? Well, I started crying during the audition. <laughs> Where I was smashed with pot. Just drive. Just get out of here. She can't cry because it's a silent movie audition. Yeah, and then when she gets home, he's going to get hit. (laughs) I guess it was the time. (laughs) Exactly, it was. It was a different time, okay. It was a different time. Well, even Marilyn Monroe, when she was Norma Jean, that's how it would be like. I forget, it was uh, one of the Warner Brothers, I think, who would always call her down to the office. And we're terrible. Mm -hmm. Terrible people. Mm Hmm. You know, and I Hollywood yeah, never yeah. changed. Never changed. Never changed. Sure wish I was a man living in that time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine, man. No, it's okay. Well, you're getting used to your new bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. top, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You got I do both miss the bottom those. and the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. But I got this cool wolf sweater. That is a cool wolf I sweater. That wolf I would sweater. wear that hundred percent. Thank you. It's a great, great sweater. Can you imagine, yeah, your first day as a man if you had never had those hormones? I don't think you could understand that level of horny. Oh, God. Oh, you couldn't handle it. They interviewed a trans woman not long ago where they were like in, like when, when you were a woman and you were a lesbian and you would talk to her, how would you feel? They go, I'd ask how if it was a good book if they were reading. When, mm-hmm. And like now that you're a man and it was like, I just want to have sex all the time. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, at least somebody's honest. If only you lived through it uh, for real. Because they put that, what, what is the name of the chemical? It starts with an S. What, what do we have? Well, testosterone. Testosterone. Yeah. That is, that's, that's not an S. S at all. <laughs> there, there's an S in there. Testosterone. 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 The hormone that we all know, that we all have. I drink enough Fox and Odin, it's testosterone. Testosterone. I was thinking stress. Testosterone, you get someone as Fox and Odin. Seriously. Sorry. Can you imagine just being injected with testosterone and having to deal with that for the first time? That's no good. Mm. No. That, that's why puberty takes time. You can't just ha- flip a switch. Yeah. Yeah, no. you can. It's almost like it's meant to be. Well, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, I'm, so, we, we're I'm sorry, man. It's okay that you did. I yes. think you're I think uh, you're beautiful. Good. Thank you. And brave. Mm-hmm. Very brave. Powerful. Yeah. Almost a hero. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Man of the year. Mm. I appreciate it. Get you on there. Right, mm-hmm. you. Mangela, the bearded hero. It's yeah. true. Yeah. 
I, I I'm I'm just glad that uh, he finally came to his mm-hmm. chair. Mm-hmm. We ask your prayers. Is, is him there? Oh yeah. wow! Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes. Just, I don't want to offend anybody here. We yeah, got to make sure everybody is addressed properly. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mantra. Mm. Good. Uh, over the weekend, <laughs> uh, Bob Iger. We we talked about it a little earlier in the show. Bob Iger was interviewed at this New York Times. Uh, summit, I guess they had some kind of thing where they brought in a bunch of CEOs and interviewed them. And uh, if you didn't know, Disney and like four other, 400 other companies pulled their funding and their advertising from, not their funding, their advertising from Twitter. Uh, because Elon, he tweet, he tweet replied, sorry, X replied to a, a post that was deemed anti Semitic. So basically, the, the, the original tweet was saying, that the Jewish community have been like the not not Jewish people, but the the Jewish organizations have been funding these uh, hum, like basically Hamas, and uh, Elon just said like yeah that's correct. So that kind of started this. Is whole that accurate? Thing. That sounds inaccurate. Mm. <laughs> if you read read the read the tweet. The, they that is that's why it it blew up. Okay. So Elon came back and like clarified what he meant. I mean, I know this. I know many can clip. be self hating, but that just seems extreme. <laughs> exactly, that was that was Elon's uh, point. So uh, they pulled their funding, their, not their funding, their their advertiser uh, ad dollars. Okay, and uh, so here's Bob Iger's response when he was asked about it. I mentioned X, and we're going to see Elon Musk in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you stopped advertising on X. We did. Tell us about that decision. And by him taking the position that he took in quite a public manner, um, we just felt that the association with that position and, and Elon Musk and X was not necessarily a positive one for us, and we decided we would pull our advertising. So then right after that, the same night Elon was interviewed, same stage, and he was asked about it as well. Here's that clip. Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? Uh, I hope it is. Hey, Bob. It's clear. <laughs> Ethan, which is just a Chad move. It was really great. Uh, prior to that, in the actual interview, he clarified what he meant because when he even said that it was a bad response because it did he kind of gave all of his detractors a loaded gun uh because he wasn't clarified like he wasn't very clear on how he responded so he actually did clarify what he meant by that tweet so play that clip the jewish people have been persecuted for thousands of years there is a natural affinity therefore uh for persecuted groups um, this has led to the funding of organizations that uh, essentially promote any persecuted group or any group with the perception of persecution. This includes radical Islamic groups. Uh, everyone here has seen the, the, the massive demonstrations mm-hmm. for Hamas in every major city in the West. That should be jarring. Well, a, a, a number of those organizations received funding f- from prominent people in the Jewish community. Right. N- n- they didn't expect that to happen. It, it, but, but if you generically, right. w- without condition, s- uh, f- sort of fund, if, if, you, if you fund persecuted groups in general, it, it, some of those persecuted groups, unfortunately, want your annihilation. And what I'm, what I meant by that, mm-hmm. when I subsequently clarified, is, is that it's unwise to, fu- to, to find organizations that support groups that want your annihilation. Is this coming across clearly? My, my, yeah. I hope so. Well, it would be like Jewish people funding Adolf Hitler. It would be. Yeah. I mean, it, look, sorry, but. It, Islamic extremists is not great for anybody. I'll just say it. Right. So in in doing so, you're going out on a limb. Yeah, I hate to say it. You Big know. limb. In doing so, like you're you're funding Which is odd because the I've people named that want you dead. All nine of my children, Muhammad. <laughs> 
just to safeguard yourself. Yeah, you yeah. know, just in case they come by. It makes sense. <laughs> Mohammed Landau. But I think that's inherently the, the problem so with uh, social media, and I think Elon is changing uh, Twitter to X and the way that you have more characters because you can put out a tweet and it can get completely misconstrued and not you can't you can't get a very thought out clear thought on Twitter. At least you couldn't. Now you can post a whole lot more, but it almost makes society worse because people read something that's super short to a response and then they can take their own and make their own arguments to it and then they have their arguments inside their head with you but it's not you it's their person inside of their head and it kind of creates this problem but i think i think elon in that interview and i I would encourage if anybody doesn't know who elon is uh, really in depth and wants to get like a, a sense of why he does what he does and what he does uh, watch that interview because it, it's like an hour and 30 minutes and he gets really in depth with like his mind and his process and why he does what he does and what he wants for the future. Uh, there's a great line in it too that I don't have a clip for, but he says, I'm, I'm interested in actually being good, not the perception of being good because he sees so many people that pretend to be good while they're doing evil. And it, when he says that, I think he's referencing Bob Iger and all of these companies that pull their funding because it's virtuous, because it makes them look good, but while they're doing evil on the back end. So I, before this interview, I, I had kind of like a neutral stance on Elon. I was like, yeah, he's, he's interesting. He's doing a lot of cool tech things, but he could be a villain. You never know. He's trying to create these chips that go in people's heads. He's doing these, these, uh, this massive social media rebranding and trying to take over that and make this X platform that's everything platform, which I think could be a bad thing. Like, I don't think everything should be under this one uh, well, platform. Well, how about the Hollywood agents that have fired Palestinians who don't have anything to do with supporting Hamas? I think that's bad too. That's yeah. involving. That's horrible. Horrible. Yeah, it's when horrible. You talk about somebody like Disney when they've tried to talk about being woke and everything else. It, it's well, they they try to say that they're woke. They try to say that we're we're doing this for social change. Bob Iger said it in his interview. He said, it's all "I don't want to be political. I want to be. Uh, I want to do things that are right and wrong. So I want to do things that are right." But he he removes LGBT stuff from his movies when they go to China or when they go to the Middle right. East. So like you don't really mean that. Well, and they also thought in America it was going to be insanely profitable. Right. And then when it wasn't, they've tried to make so much stuff that they've jammed down your throat, mm-hmm. uh, you know, figuratively, that they've jammed down your throat <laughs> so that it becomes popular. And right. that's the problem is they've done it so radically that people begin to notice that it's like, we know what you're doing and mm-hmm. we'd like you to stop now. It's and disingenuous. Exactly. There's no heart behind it. There's no, there's, there's no heart behind a massive corporation like that who has only one thing in mind which is completely money and i think elon makes a good point yeah. he is a centibillionaire from scratch what the hell does he care about a guy who was handed the keys to disney yeah right the guy knows what he's talking about so why not be honest about it you have a ton of money you can't bribe somebody with that kind of money yeah. that's a good thing and, and show the we have i have another clip here when he was asked about like what that was going to do to X, the boycott, this big boycott that they're trying to do. Uh, here's his response to it. What, what this advertising boycott is, uh, is, is going to do, it's, it's going to kill the company. And you think that the company... I, I, but, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. I don't think exactly. he's, he's a perfect person. I think he makes mistakes, and he even said that he makes mistakes. Um, I think he can, he can do, uh, he can say things that are really incorrect, but I think he, he's doing it in a way that he's trying to do good. He, you know, he, he actually genuinely tries to do the best thing. And I think standing up for free speech in this fact is like, if he, if he went and apologized, like all these other people apologized and say, oh, I'd, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean this and I did that. And he, even, he did clarify and he said, I didn't mean it that way. This is how I meant it. But if he apologized and then got everybody to come back, then he's just continuing the same cycle we have. But instead, he's willing to blow up his company, this company that he overpaid for, stand up for 
free speech. Well, yeah, I think he's it's being great. crystal clear about the fact that he's saying Hamas is wrong. Right. I don't think it should be funded, especially by the people who they brutalize. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And he's trying to explain that position where Bob Iger and other companies just see, well, no, everybody, we're all, what? No, it's, it, they don't, it, it's easy to explain yourself when your intentions are clear and you know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And it's based on what you actually feel. Bob Iger just has to come out and go, well, you know, we just pulled our advertising. That's what we did. That's a dick swing yeah. while you have a guy using logic against him. So it's it, if you look at that in it, through any eyes in America, you're looking at somebody who's using reason and somebody who's trying to use clout and cash. It's yeah. just not... I think you, you, were, Bob Iger is trying to bully Elon Musk with this, you know, advertising boycott, and Elon Musk is just basically going, "I just don't care." Well, I have, I have so much stinking money yourself. I don't care. And who needs, who needs Twitter more? Yeah, company Uh, that needs social media advertising. mm -hmm. Or that's the reality. It's like you need Twitter more than Uh Twitter needs you. Oh yeah, which he said. Bob Iger goes, "Oh, we're we're pulling our funding because we felt like it wasn't aligning with our values." But we do actually let ABC still have an account, and they do stuff, and we have this other account that does stuff. So, so you do still need it. Oh, so your value, but your values were fine two years ago when your the platform was being used to, you know, uh, bully people to the point of suicide. That was right. fine. That was okay. But now at this point, the, it's a bridge too far. A personal, yeah, uh, whatever this is, because of a comment yeah. being made against Islam. That's that's the that's the line. Yeah. Good, Bob Iger. That's mm-hmm. that's great. I think that's that's like the the shallowness of our our culture right now is like. Well, that one comment will be like misconstrued and thought to be completely anti-Jewish when it's not at all. It's a uh, positive. It's it's uh, what, what would you call it? It's not anti-Semitic. That's pro-Semitic, right? I don't know the terminology on that. Uh, I, but well, that, I mean, that's it's what just it is. Your, your favorite. I mean, it's yeah. I don't. I can't understand the difference between anybody. So it's like, yeah, but it's oh, like, I, yeah, I, I I don't know. But I it, like the the point that you bring up yeah. is uh, the movie studios that. That pull stuff from uh, Persian Palestinians, Palestinians yeah, and, and Persian people, and many have been and, fired. Uh, all of the Middle East, they they do that. They so they go the other way, and I think a lot a lot of uh, discourse ends up going all Jews are evil or all Palestinians are evil, are evil which is it's ridiculous. Cra- it's crazy how people latch on to those ideologies so quickly. Yes, and that's their reason, and they say, well, that's the only way. And it's like you're going to tell me there's no gray area involved in anything. Yeah, which and it's is like it, it's it's it, the, it's like you have Palestinians who don't support that, and they're losing jobs because they. Yeah, there's aren't. plenty of Palestinians that yeah. don't support that. Of course, I mean there Hamas are. is, you know, it, what it was the popular vote was like 52 percent, right? Of Hamas, t- you know, being the, the governing body over over Palestine. So that's you still have 48 percent of the people. Yeah. In Palestine, right, that don't agree with Hamas, plus all the Palestinians here in the United States that probably fled because of that. Yeah. Exactly, and then you, yes, you do have. You're going to penalize these people here, and then the ones that are pro-Islam who are hurting people on the streets. You see Jews getting attacked. It's, right. it's horrible, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's what he's talking about. Why shouldn't that scare you? Yeah. If you have people that are literally terrified to leave, you know, and it's a lot of it's the news and what's being shown, but. You know, it, it's it scares the crap out of people who have done nothing wrong. I, I think just in general, and it, I'll speak for myself, I, I, I disconnected from Twitter specifically because I just found myself like on it too much, just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because I've kind of made it, I justified it to myself to be like, it's my job. Like I do a lot of shows, I host, co-host a lot of shows and I, I need to be up to date on all, all this stuff. So I was like on it all the time. Anytime I had downtime, I was scrolling and it... it you may not notice it, but it does give you this kind of like dark cloud around you. You will you, hate humanity right, if you spend that exactly. much time on so, X or Twitter. So Just I, I, when you start reading the vile stuff that comes out on there that that just pours out of people. Well, it's, it's designed. Right. It just to. gives you this, exactly this hate, like this this it does hatred in the in the yeah. back of your head. And if you dis- disconnect, you go, oh, yeah, none of that matters. It's mm-hmm. all fake doesn't matter and you talk to people that are around you and you get to know people that are around you like that's i i encourage people to do that more that's like my now that is my message is to like disconnect from all that crap and just try to remember that 
you can only affect the things that are around you and the people that are around you and don't get so caught up into it. I think be aware, but don't be, make it your whole life. Cause that, that's not good. And uh, yeah, the idea, honestly, and I know it's just cliche at this point, but just hating giant groups of people is just, it, it's just lame. And You're stupid. stupid. You are, yeah. you, I'm sorry, but you are stupid. If you hate giant groups of people and you label them, whatever direction especially Left, based right, on center uh muslim some guys Jew, post christian it's all dumb <laughs> no exactly we'll like I mean, this I mean, guy has it together i like what he said so that's my thought right it's, it's like, just you, you need to just focus on certain people to hate right <laughs> just yes, yeah are. i mean you got individuals look at the whole listen look at the whole team there's got i'm a detroit lions fan there's guys in the lions i don't like of course what you can't, yeah you can't be in show business <laughs> and not have been influenced by Jews. Right. I'm a comic. They created it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but <laughs> it's uh, like, what? Oh, no. what? What? Garrett. Mangela? Mm-hmm. What did you, That's don't speak of Mangela. Sorry. I was going to say that. You never heard of Mel could... Brooks? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Nobody here. You can... Legend. Are we going to deny that there's many Jewish comedians? <laughs> like, yeah. Was... Yeah. They're great. Many still around today. Mm. Shockingly enough. <laughs> Undertack, I got to tell you guys. <laughs> it is my favoriteest underwear ever. The bestest. It, the bestest there is. Most guys spend more than half their day sitting around, and every one of us have been irritated by uncomfortable boxers. Mm-hmm. Telling me. And that uh, it can get you can get you adjusted. Yeah. Undertack is in your typical men's boxers. They're made with modal. I don't know what that is. Modal. It's some kind of mystical... Modal? magic uh, miracle fabric that I don't know how it works, but it is so soft. Is it from Mordor? It is. Ah, Think of it like Mordor. Use the dark arts. Cotton and the dark arts. And also a little bit of the heavens because God handmade these boxers. (laughs) That's how it feels. I believe you. It feels like he had (laughs) angels weave them. Play the harpsichord oh, right while you clouds. put them on. Like angels' wings door. flapping on your underside. It is. It's it feels amazing. just like that. Every time your balls jiggle, an angel gets its wings. Yes, it does. And with it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I felt that on my taint. Ooh. I felt uh, mystical. Undertack is durable. <laughs> Ultralight. Fade resistant, which mm. is important. And here's the best part. They're 20... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why anyway, I thought that was funny. Yeah, but funny. Honestly, it's uh, they're twenty five percent less, re- more resistant. Whatever. Less expensive. Less expensive is what they are. A quarter I, less expensive. If you said they were twenty five percent less resistant, it's not a selling point. So they are twenty five percent. That's a negative. Which cheaper. is not what they said. They're cheaper, yeah. but a better. Pro- Look, I'm wearing them right now. Me too. You don't believe me? Tired of it. There you go. Check it. Undertech, man. Undertech. Wow, look at that. Yes. Undertech. Look. You can't you can't see because Undertech. You are. That's right, baby. Undertech. I'm a believer, dude. Your commitment to a sponsor to wedge yourself like that. Oh yeah, dude. No, Impressive. but it's like oh, dude, we dude, we only I, take I could do it. Yeah. We use. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I can wedge myself because it doesn't hurt because they're so damn dude, soft. It's like I'm not wearing underwear. It's amazing. It's a, it's, it's amazing. Or, it you know, is. like but 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 I am. All I'm saying is go to undertech.com, use the code NORMAL20, and get 20% off, and I guarantee you, you're going to tell me how much you like them. You're going to say, Dave, I have never felt so free in my entire life, and when I take them off, there's not the usual odor. You know how you get that after you've gone out for the entire night, and you're like, good lord, Ooh, swamp why would a woman ever go down there? So these prevent that. So trust me. And also... A percentage of the proceeds go to human trafficking. What? Wait, huh? Oh, not Is the cartel. Actually? It's to prevent human trafficking. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It fights against. You got to clarify That's a good that. Thing. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good way that it does it. Yeah. So remember, not only are you going to feel better downstairs, but it prevents a lot of helpless girls <laughs> from feeling bad downstairs. <laughs> So go to Undertack and use code NORMAL20 and get your lovely underwears today. As a new Undertack. user, uh, as a new user, oh, Angela. Yes, Mangela. Uh, yeah. You know, I find it spacious and um, 
with all my new parts, I find that it fits quite well. Oh, that's, that's great. Are you selling a timeshare? I am. It's yes. a timeshare in your pants. I do. It is. I share yeah. with my husband. What? Hell. We're both men now. Hello. Oh, the lore on this. Is How does he feel deep. about it? This mm. is... It's fine. Great. Okay. All right, Derek, where can we see you? <laughs> Clearly he seems thrilled. <laughs> yeah. I have... I will be at uh, Side Splitters Comedy Club in Wesley Chapel, Florida, December 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'll be at uh, Brad Garrett's Comedy Club at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, December 18 through 23. And then uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, over New Year's at the Comedy Cabana, December 28 through 31. DerekRichards.com is my website. Outstanding. This weekend, I will be at the Syracuse Funny Bone with the beautiful Matt McClowry. You can check us out. And also... December 15th, the Irving Theater in Indianapolis, and December 16th, the Art Theater Ooh. in Hobart, Indiana. Fancy. I just did a lovely uh, interview today on their local TV where I was asked great questions. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Garrett, where will you be? Uh, Friday Night Tights on Fridays on the Nerdrotic channel. Last week, we just had our record show. It was almost, it was like tw almost 20,000 live viewers on a Friday night, which is wow. crazy. So thank you, everybody that watched that. Uh, go check it out. We had a lot of fun. And uh, my channel... Adam Krigler's channel on Mondays for Based Aff Monday. We have fun on those shows, so check it out. Thank you. And thanks, Derek, for coming on. Thanks for having me. having you on here. Always a good time. Thank and you so now much. now we bring you to End of the World. Ow! Uh, following his uh, explosion? Explosion. Explo I, it was cut off there. I couldn't. Couldn't quite read that. The uh, ex explosion from Congress, HBO announced that Santos brief. Uh, is, Santos is brief. I can't go read, dude. Why don't you just do this? I can't I read, it. dude. I think the whiskey's hitting. I did. Well, I did. It's good, great though. sponsor. Great sponsor. Fox and Odin. Great. We won't blame this Feels on, good. on homeschooling. It, it's, it's mostly because of Following <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> Following his expulsion from Congress, it's sad when I have to take the wheel on reading. Dude. <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you I cannot read? It? Okay, Dave, I don't know how to take read the wheel. All right. Uh, following his expulsion from Congress, HBO announced that Santos' brief political career would be uh, the subject of a new dark comedy film they are producing. What will the name of the movie be? Oh. Well, I thought that Batman Returns was already covered, already covered his political <laughs> career. Hey, I'm not the only one. <laughs> that was Danny DeVito, Mangela. Oh, well, he was playing Danny DeVito. Oh, like the Penguin from the Batman movie. Correct. My bad. Well, you can see my confusion. They do look dressed the same. That's clear. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. It's clear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is spot on. Dude, yeah, smooth, uncanny, dude. Smooth like Fox and Odin whiskey. That movie oh, has yeah. been made already. Ooh, uh, what would you call it? Schindler's Fist. I like that. It's <laughs> topical. I like that. I think so, yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, By Curious George and the Search for the Missing Banana. <laughs> <Get to me. laughs> you always know where that banana is, though. I Every guess. time. Yes, you do. Yeah. The man with the yellow hat. Yeah. I'm going to go with Santos Loves Mantos. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Normal World. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye-bye. <laughs>